And from the 13th century, West Africa's most important seat of learning. In Sierra Leone, I've often heard stories of the Alphas, learned men from the north who travelled south to spread the word of Allah. What I'd never realised before is that many of them would have started out right here, in the deserts of Timbuktu. Even Africans are just discovering the story of Timbuktu and its lost libraries. Probably people educated in Arabic and Islam know something about manuscripts, but I don't think that the general public are aware about uh, manuscripts. And as Timbuktu's manuscripts are brought out of hiding, the conviction grows that what, that what they have to tell us may forever rewrite Africa's history. This box looks like it's been buried. It's covered in dirt and things on the bottom. Why was it put under the ground? Over the years, we have protected the manuscript from those who wanted to take them away. We have over 4,000 manuscripts in our collection. What's incredible is that I'm in a small village in Mali, in Africa, on the edge of the Sahara Desert. It's about the last place on earth I'd expect to find manuscripts hundreds of years old. But this is where the search for the lost libraries of Timbuktu really begins. This is a really interesting manuscript about astronomy. These are the astronomic drawings showing the position of all stars. I'm not an expert. But that is what they tell us. They knew more about it then than I do now. It shows you how to calculate position of the stars using these letters and numbers. Next, he showed me a 16th century manuscript. So this is a text of the prophet's sayings. What's more, they are all these notes in the margin, they can be about anything. But this one talks about hygiene. If you eat something unclean, you will always have problems and complications with your health. Okay, so you must always wash your food. And here's a 500-year-old recipe for toothpaste. You take some salt and some sugar and mix that together with some charcoal and brush it on your teeth every day and your teeth will become white. And what's more, it will get rid of your bad breath. End of the 10th century when Timbuktu was founded, a large part of West Africa was under the rule of the Ghana Empire. It was West Africa's first superpower, and its leaders were early converts to Islam. And its leaders were early converts to Islam. And its leaders were early converts to Islam. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Racha HaKodash, and double honors to the elder apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Shalom also to you other fellow believers believers you other brethren you few sisters and uh, shalom to the elect anyway I want to go on this video uh, I was doing some research in fact this is all all inspired by um, Christianity how we were uh, forced conversion you know I was in one of the videos I did I brought out an article how you know the app they said the Africans were well, the so-called Negroes were um, and Native Americans where we would they had a book and they had a some type of order or law on on how to force convert convert <coughs> Negroes so-called Negroes to um, Christianity and so you have to question what were we before then so as I was doing further research you had a lot of these Pan-Africanisms Pan-African people saying that we were timid we had great history in Africa as uh, black people, which we did, but you had different nations, right? You had Kemet, right? Which you did, but you had Hebrews, you know, Hebrew Israelites, which Kim just means hot. But you had the Hermetic people, you had the Hebrew Israelites, and as Hebrew Israelites, we had dealings with other nations. We were known to go into Egypt even. So 
that's where the lost texts come into place because you have a people today who want to um, set themselves up to be the chosen people of the Bible and that way the biggest lies to put us is the fact of Hamites and sub-Saharan Africans right or Egyptians you know they'll give us that but to be the people of the Bible no they don't want us to have that that big lie is being uncovered as Isaiah 47 and 1 says so anyway I want to read a, a, a few articles on there's some historians or scholars who claim that there was no history we had no history uh, this, I'll try to read it quick it's a few of them uh, and I'll go into the scriptures on that as well Hugh Trevor Roper right this guy um, Trevor Roper um, he was born I don't know he died in 2003 he was 89 years old I think he was born in 1914 right so Hugh Trevor Roper wrote in his book another it says another aspect of Trevor Roper's outlook on history and on scholarly research was well, scholar just means student um, studied right research that has inspired controversy is his statement about the historical experiences of pre-literate societies following uh, volunteers remarks on the fall of the Roman Empire at the hands of the barbarian tribes right <laughs> he asserted that Africa had no history prior to European exploitation right exploration or exploitation however you want to call it and colonization so in other words we were nothing but barbarians you know sick people that had no history and he said he went around the world and studied certain things but as we see there's archaeological evidence of things being dug up and being proved uh, who we were and there was evidence of that because they were suppressing that evidence the truth it says he says Africa is no historical part of the world it has no movement or development to exhibit Trevor Roper said there are only the history of Europeans in Africa so we can clearly see this is why I went into this we can clearly see how during the reformationists you know you had uh, I always like to bring up John Calvin and various others popes and um, you know um, whatever you want to call it who uh, Jesuits priests that went not just in Africa right but uh, different parts of Spain which really I did some more research and found out that they was bringing slave you know started it some years before they came to Africa in, in even in Spain some years back before the 1600s going to the early 1500s you know I mean this is just research so according to this guy there was no history we had no history but we can see now they looked at us as uncivilized right because again we was following Islam we was following um, other practices and beliefs some of us was following being the Hebrews right but then we adopted other practices along with our native uh, tongue and our belief right so these guys looked at it as when they came into power they had an argument and fighting amongst one another on, on how to establish power and they, they've done that you know you, you see uh, America and you know other countries of and these people of the same nations I got to keep it clean who are you know fighting for power on how to establish you know even the NWO right but the top elites has so called that under control he says there is no history except Europeans in Africa the rest is darkness this is where we get the dark ages this is where we get the Byzantine Empire meaning I believe meaning backwards right as a past an edifying gyration of barbarous tribes okay of picture seek and 
uh, irrelevant comers of the globe. So I'm not going to read all that. I'm just just getting to the point. Let's go to Psalms 83 and 3, and then I'll get another article, right? It says, um, they have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For, we have cons for they have consulted together with one consent and a confederate against thee. Right? So, they also said the tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites of Moab and the Hagarenes. Right? So, the elites, the ones you see today, they uh, set up, helped fund the, the uh, you had the sub-Saharan slave trade and you had the transatlantic slave trade and they helped fund it through the so-called Arabs, right? Through the slave trade. Now remember, we converted, a lot of us converted into so-called Islam. We were calling ourselves Moors, which means black. But we had uh, so-called Arabic names, Arabic, Arabic writings, and so forth. In fact, um, a lot of those so-called Arabs that you see, you know, if you get the real history and look at them, they look just like Negroes, man. Some of them look just like, which Arab means mixture, but they look, you know, a good portion. That's why a, a, a good portion of them so-called Arabs, a, a lot of them are Israelites. You know, I believe that. A lot of them are Israelites. Some of them, you know, you had some of us that left from the, uh, the you know, you had the southern and the northern tribe split. But then you had, you had the southern tribe, but then you had some of the northern tribes that stayed back as well. Right? So, and then you would have some of the southern tribes that came here as well. Okay? So, I just want to get that point. So, we're also going to go into a little history. Now, when you, you know, I'm not going to break down a whole Revelation, third, I mean, Revelation 12, but you can, you know, check out videos. Brothers got many videos on that. But uh, I, I just want to go into Revelation 12, and I'm going to start at, uh, looks like about 14. I'm going to start at about 14, and it says, Therefore rejoice, well, let me go on, um, let me go to 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth he has but a short time and it's really pushing that now but when this man whatever his name is George I mean Hugh whatever he really he was a really hater of Jake man you know he's really a hater of Jake he wrote that book I believe in 1975 and that was part of the destruction uh, trying to forward the affliction of our people, but at that time we had started to started waking up into who we are, so we could clearly see why this guy was set up. We could clearly see why he was set up to try to cut us off from being a nation. You know, let's go to 14, and it says, "And the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might flee into the wilderness in her place." Right, so. During the siege, and I'll get that as well. During the siege of going back to 65 uh, A.D., really going up to 70 A.D., when we uh, fled, you know, into Africa, and you know we had some dealings in other places as well, right? So when we um, we fled into Africa to, to flee um, Roman persecution, okay, under uh, Vespasian Titus. You know, we had to um, flee Roman persecution. And then ultimately they came and got us, right, and brought us here. It says where she is nourished for a time, and time and a half a time for the face, uh, for the, from the face of the serpent. So we ultimately came here. And uh, let's go to Jeremiah 8 and 11. I can just quote it. It says they have healed the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying peace, peace, when there is no peace. You know, we went through that, um, all that BS through the, um, you know, through the civil rights era. So this man has always put atrocities in hell on our people, man. But then when we got here, we got a little comfortable. And then what happened is they set Eve up on top, gave her benefits, looked out for her, 
set her, helped her, helped her out, you know. And that was part of the destruction of our people too. So this is a page, a book out of uh, Babylon Timbuktu, page eighty-four. I didn't want to make this too long, uh, but I just thought this was real interesting. Uh, page eighty-four. It says from Babylon to Timbuktu, page eighty-four. It says. In the year 65 BC, the Roman armies under General Pompey captured Jerusalem, right? Oh, yeah, well, here we go. In 70 AD, General Vespasian and his son Titus put an end to the Jewish state with a great slaughter, right? And we go back in history with the Babylonians, you know, you, 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 um, the Greeks, you know, you had, uh, you know, you had, a, you go back to the time of the Maccabees. You know, all these things that happened to us and atrocities all the way up to the, the 1500s, 1600s, uh, brought us into captivity and what they did to the Native Americans, man. Okay? It says, had many outrageous and atrocities were committed against the residue of the people. So you mean to tell me, all this that has happened to us, our history being erased, the biblical curses of the Bible, right, has nothing to do with these so-called blacks and uh, Negroes and Native Americans all this has happened but we have nothing to do with it there's no history right during the period from Pompey to Julius it was estimated that over a thousand I mean a million Jews fled into Africa fleeing Roman persecution and, and, uh, and slavery it says the slave markets were full of black Jewish or black Jews right uh, and uh, it says yep Yep, saying that we are real Jews. So, how did this happen? And um, even in the scriptures, um, it spoke of, you know, that's why when you read, when you go into the, the breakdowns, it'll jump, it'll go back from the, the past and then the future and then the past. And this is why a lot of the Christians, they don't understand. They don't understand the scriptures. You know, um, when you go into Matthew, I think the 24th, um, even Yahweh said um, that we would have to flee um, into the mountains, you know. Um, so let's go to, let's go to, um, and when you go back to Roman persecution, well, let me see, back here it says the siege, right? Well, let's look up the word siege. And that's coming, that's coming to Babylon, you know, which you see today. It says a military blockade. Right when you look at martial law, it means that means warlike, right? Um, a military blockade of a city or fortunate or fortified place to compel it to surrender a persistent or serious attack. Okay, obsolete seat of distinction to besiege military. Right. So let me also go to this article here just to show you the sickness. And hypocrisy of this man okay this man is sick in his mindset we can't be nothing and this is also going to a lot of these um, a lot of these are uh, Christians and how they're trying to promote us as being nothing but African Aborigines that's that's uh, in the desert and swinging from vines let me read this Real quick, I think his man name is. I'll try to read this quick. It's like a little article by um, George Hegel or something like that. It says Hegel's uh, uh, negotiation of Africa from history civiliz civilization. Africa is not among Hegel's fourth culture or civilization. From Hegel's perspective, Africa is said to be unhistorical, undeveloped spirit, still involved in the conditions of mere nature, devoid of morality, religions, and political constitution. Hence, he holds that there is justification for Europe in, Europe's enslavement and colonizations of Africans. For him, slavery causes the increase of human feelings among the Negroes. This is what we're talking about. These were nothing but Christians. These were nothing but Christians. George Hagel, this other uh, nut job, they were nothing but Christians. That was their whole ideology, you know. Due to these, uh, to his thesis on Africa, Hegel's is rejected by many black scholars, right? Of course.
But then you got these black scholars who sit up there and support Christianity. Right? His work on Africa is said to glorify ancient Greece while is ignominiously a uh, grotesquely uh, degenerates Africans <laughs> who he sees as the children in the forest unaffected by the movement of history. This is, you know, it goes on and on. It goes on and on. I'm not even going to read the rest of it. George Hagels, I think that's his name. You can look him up or whatever. He's just, you know, and nobody's doing videos on this guy. No Christian is coming up and saying, what's up with this guy, man? This goes back to our history. This goes back to us being cut off and following uh, these, these wicked doctrines. This is why we all messed up. This is why our heritage has been taken. So, so for the people that suffered the worst on the planet, we have no history. And this is what they're saying. All the atrocities throughout time, each time uh, this, this man will try to cover it up, right? This man in the spirit always trying to cover it up to keep us oppressed. Look at your history. That's what they're doing now. They're trying to uh, force us. They force conversion, convert you, and then keep you, right, in that deep, sick mind state well that's why we're waking up and we're bringing up the truth that's all I have on that show